everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about the sum or difference of cubes. Now you may remember from a while back, probably in your algebra journey, that you've talked about the difference of squares or just other types of factoring. But difference of squares comes up when you're introduced to factoring. It's the same kind of thing. It is a pattern they want you to recognize. So sum and difference, when we say that, sum is the fancy pants word for adding, difference is the fancy pants word for subtracting. And a cube is any number or variable that is multiplied by itself three times. So x times x times x would be x cubed. Three times three times three would equal three cubed or 27. So that's what we're talking about. So they really want you just to memorize a pattern and then recognize when this pattern can be used. And here is the pattern. The first one is the sum of cubes, a cubed plus b cubed. The a and b here can represent any variable, number, or a number and a variable together. It just means a thing has been cubed and another thing has been cubed and they've been added together. Now when you're given that, you're presented with this, something has been cubed, something else has been cubed and they've been added, factor it. The way you're going to factor it is the first thing plus the second thing times the first thing squared minus the first times the second thing plus the second thing squared. There's a reason I'm saying it like that instead of A and B and hopefully it'll make it a little more easier when we get to the next step. The other version is the difference of cubes, which is A cubed minus B cubed. Same thing, A cubed, B cubed doesn't mean it has to be just a number cubed or a variable cubed. It can be 4x that was cubed. And you're going to see things like that. So just kind of get used to that idea that A and B can represent an, a number and a variable together. It doesn't have to be just one or the other. So for this one, it's so, so close to the one above. Only difference, this changes to A minus B. And this one changes to a plus right there. Yeah, this is just something that has to be memorized. Memorized. <laughs> There's no two ways about it, unfortunately. I don't even actually know a good mnemonic for this. Uh, they always put the A plus B first, and it's the part that looks, you know, the most similar, we have A cubed plus B cubed, A plus B, A cubed minus B cubed, A minus B. Those signs match. And then the first sign is the opposite. <clears throat> That's really as good as it gets as far as an easy way to remember this. Sometimes in school, you just have to memorize things. This is one of those times. So now let's talk about applying this. Start with a more straightforward example. I'm going to move this over here so we can still see it, but we have a little more room to do some examples. So here's one, x cubed plus eight, and you're asked to factor it. You always, whenever it's just two terms, x to a power and then a number, or just frankly, any two terms that you're given, you're gonna be looking for, is there a greatest common factor to pull out? Is there, a difference of squares at work? Is there a difference of cubes? Is there a sum of cubes at work? Those are the only four things you can do when it's only two terms. And sometimes you're going to see this in a second. It has to be a combination of those two. You have to do both. This one's very straightforward. I look at this. I know I have two terms. So I go, hmm, I can't be a difference of squares because it's adding, not subtracting. I don't see any greatest common factor. It could be a sum of cubes. Let's see, is x cubed a cube? Yes, it is. It's x times x times x. Is eight a cube? Yes, it is. It's two times two times two. So I'm going to be using this top pattern up here. And 
the correlation here is my A, wherever there's an A, I'm going to plug in X, and wherever there's a B, I'm going to plug in 2. So the pattern says there's an A, so I plug in an X, then a plus sign, then there's a B, so I plug in 2. Then the first thing is A squared, so I plug in my X, X squared. Then a minus sign, then A times B, so 2 times X, 2X, plus sign B squared. My B is 2, 2 squared is 4, and I've factored it. Double check here though, always, just, just in case. It's unlikely, but it can happen. Double check to make sure that neither of these can be factored any further. Make sure that you can't pull out a greatest common factor out of here and make sure that this can't be factored. Usually this is as far as it goes, but you know, math tests love trying to trick you. They may throw in something where you have to keep factoring. Here's an example with a subtracting one. 64 X cubed minus 27 Y cubed. So here we have numbers and variables together. Same sort of process. First I look and say, is there any greatest common factor? No, nope. no there isn't. I don't see anything that goes into both 64 and 27. There isn't anything that goes into both X cubed and Y cubed. Is this a difference of squares? No, 64 is a square, but X cubed isn't. 27 isn't and Y cubed isn't. Is it a sum of cubes? No, because it's being added. Last but not least, is it a difference of cubes? Of course that's what it is. So you have to look at when you're doing this, is this a cube and is this a cube? They both have to be cubes. And it is. 64 is 4 times 4 times 4 and X is X times X times X. Which means 64 X cubed could be written as 4 X times 4 X times 4 X. 27 Y cubed? Yes, 27 is a cube. It's 3 times 3 times 3. Y cubed is a cube, it's Y times Y times Y, so 27 Y cubed could be rewritten as 3Y times 3Y times 3Y. So my A, because this time we're going to be using this one, A cubed minus B cubed, my A in this case is 4X and my B is 3Y. So to plug all these in, the pattern says we do a minus B, so 4X minus 3Y. Then I take my A and I square it. 4X squared is 4X times 4X, 16X squared. I multiply the 4's together, I multiply the X's together. Then plus sign, then A times B, so 4X times 3Y. 3 times 4 is 12 and the X's and Y's just hang out together. Then B squared, 3Y squared, 3Y times 3Y, I multiply the 3's together gives me 9, Y's together gives me Y squared, and that's my answer. There's one tricky little variation that they like doing, which is a combination. I'm going to give you an example of one of those. So let's say you saw 2X cubed plus 54Y cubed. Now anytime I see a cube, I immediately think sum or difference of cubes. That's the first thing off the top of my head. This is a plus, so it would have to be sum of cubes. So I look at my variables and go, ah yeah, that's a cube, x cubed, y cubed, that's a cube. Woohoo, I'm on the right course. I'm on the right track. Two is not a cube. Well that just throws a wrench in the works. What do I do? Then you shift and see if there's any other thing you can do to factor this. It's not going to be a difference of squares or a difference of cubes because again, it's being added, not subtracted. The only other thing that you can do if you have only two um, terms here is, is there a greatest common factor? And there is. There isn't between X cubed and Y cubed, but in two and 54, two goes into both of those. So I'm going to pull out two and I get X cubed plus 27 Y cubed. 
Now, remember how earlier I said that when you get to this end point where it's like this to always double check this part to see if there's anything else that can be factored out or check this part and see if there's a greatest common factor that always applies as long as you have an X with an exponent or a, I should say a variable with an exponent always check and see if you can factor it more it's only when you get down to like the plain X's or it's plain numbers that you can say okay I factored it <laughs> we're done that you, you can be more confident in saying that but as long as there's a variable with an exponent check again so here we've pulled the greatest common factor out I need to check again just to make sure see if that can be factored and it's cubes and it's being added so I'm gonna go hmm is this a sum of cubes well my first one x cubed yeah that's x times x times x 27 that's a cube 3 times 3 times 3 y cubed y times y times y sure enough I've got now after I took the 2 out a sum of cubes so the a here or cube root of x cubed would be x and my b or the cube root of 27 y cubed is 3 y so don't forget to bring down your 2 and now we're going to fill in our little pattern to factor this this is a sum of cubes so this time I am using my top pattern so X goes in here for a I put my plus sign 3 Y goes in here for B then a squared so I plug X in there X squared minus sign a times B X times 3 Y we write that as 3 X Y then a plus sign and b squared so 3y squared 3y times 3y is 9y squared and we double check that x squared minus 3xy plus 9y squared to see if we can factor it and no we cannot factor that so that is our final answer I hope you enjoyed that today um, if it was helpful useful in any way please like share subscribe you know the drill Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.